Howdy folks. Today we're going to look at some uh, different types of carving knives and a few tools and how they use to produce these types of carvings. We have some pelicans. This is a, 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 a bust of a face of a wood spirit and these are some uh, these are uh, pelicans that I'm carving and I'm, because they're so small I will carve them uh, together like this and when I reach a, a certain stage of finishing then I will separate them. So let's right now let's just look at some of the tools that we'll be using. These are some whittling knives that I made with carbon steel. Prob probably one of the most used knives is this this one right here. That's either a sheep's foot or a Warncliffe style blade with a straight edge. And so we're looking and we have two basic two basic styles. Turned down edge, turned up edge. That's our two main knives, two main classes. Anything else would be uh, say a, a variation of, of those two basic styles, turned up, turned up edge, turned down edge. That would allow us to carve in different areas of the carving, uh, to reach areas that either, either shape would not be as effective. So those are our main carving knives. And here we have our, these are really two basic tools and there are varieties and different sizes of these tools. The first tool is called a V-tool, obviously, uh, because of the shape of the cutting edge. You see it's a perfect V. And that tool would give you an effect like this. A single cut is actually, would actually duplicate what it takes two cuts of one of these other knives. That's the V-tool. Now here's a round gouge, and obviously you can see why it's called the round gouge. And it it would carve, it does a scooping type of carve. And that would give you a particular shape that would be hard to carve with a, a, just a bare knife. These are carbon, these tools, the, the steel are carbon steel, and which holds a good edge, uh, easy to sharpen, and uh, the carbon steel allows these blades, the tools and the knives to have very thin, sharp, sharp edge, whereas some stainless steels would not uh, let you have that, that thin a blade without chipping or, uh, or breaking while you carve it. This is a uh, thumb protector that I use. I'm right-handed, of course, and I'll use this thumb <coughs> protector to allow me to do what's called a paring cut, and I will use my turn-down edge to uh, to round this block of basswood, that's a basswood, B-A-S-S, this is a common carving wood, and I generally carve, start carving the, the little pelicans from a block, and so we'll kind of round this off to give you a basic idea how these tools are working. This is called a paring cut, just like you would uh, use a paring knife to cut a uh, cut an apple or uh, or an onion, and uh, you can see the reason for that thumb guard is because we're carving towards the thumb like that. This would be a safe way to use this cut, this type of cut, paring cut, by using a thumb protector or either a carving glove that would protect all of your fingers. So that gives you an idea how, how this would work. That's the turn down edge. Now here's the turned up edge, and that would that would allow us to make a cut in this area here. So it would allow a turn with the turned up edge, 
it will allow us to make a scoop cut like that that would be smooth to where to where we would come in with this round gouge to complete this this round carving in the neck area because if we didn't have the either this turned up edge or that round gouge we would meet a transition area here that would fuzz up when we're making that cut so as we're making that cut the blade would be going into the grain at, a, at an angle that would cause it to, to fuzz up so to prevent that problem we use our little round gouge to even that off and to smooth that out so let's see if we can this is a uh, this is an angel carving that uh, that I have band saw the outline and now that I'm going to start carving I'll just break off these parts and we uh, we won't can we won't finish the carving now but it'll, it'll just give you an idea of how how these how these uh, pieces uh, start out whoops I believe we did we get Ranger Kooky on that shot there okay you can see and again this is basswood it's a great carving wood because uh, it's easy to carve it's consistent and it holds detail some woods some hard woods uh, hard to carve but uh, because they would be uh, a brittle, they would not hold some of the detail that bass would. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the V, the v tool <coughs> and outline our carving that would give us a starting point for our, our angel. Normally I would use a pencil and, and and mark these particular areas for carving, but I've carved so many of these, I can just carve them by heart like this. Of course, that's the rear of the angel, and we're outlining the wings here. So in the front, same thing. We're going to first carve a position of a, of a face. Now this angel carving is kind of a generic type of face so it can be either a, a a gentleman angel or a lady angel so we just kind of kind of shape this with the v tool to give us that kind of oval face face shape and leaving the the hair part of the angel uh, in that silhouette shape. Okay, these are some real basic tools that we're using. And uh, maybe in a later video, uh, video, we can get more detailed if, uh, if we have some viewers that would i uh, like to see a particular kind of carving or a particular function of these tools. Howdy folks, this is Roy uh, again, and I'd like to show you uh, some carvings that we have, that I have completed, and I uh, have some pieces that are under construction. Uh, most of these pieces, these smaller pieces, are carved from basswood, and I'll generally start with a block of wood about this size. This is a standard size that we get from our supplier, and this is North American basswood. Now from this piece, again these are three pelicans that I carved. As, as one piece because they're small and hard to hold on to. So when I carve and reach a particular point, I will separate the head from the piling and complete the detail. Let's see, this, uh, this is the beginning of a St. Francis who was a monk 
uh, in, uh, I believe, the 12th, 13th century. He was the patron saint of uh, animals and pets. Here's a, a pelican that is basically completed. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, displaying these uh, next week on the 10th, and that'll be the, uh, the uh, Fall for Art uh, in downtown Covington. Now this is a bunny rabbit that we generally carve around Easter time, and this is a favorite, uh, favorite carving uh, uh, during that, that season. This is a bust, and this is no, no particular individual. It's just kind of a, it's a, a kind of a practice to carve a, a, a human face. A human face requires the different features of a face to, to be in a certain position, so it does take a little more effort to carve a human face. And anybody that is a football fan, they might recognize this number nine uh, quarterback in black and gold. Now here's one of my favorite hound dogs, and this one is under under construction. It's being carved, and I've reached reached the point where we'll have to add more detail to the eyes, and I have the detail that has to be carved. I have it's it penciled in in the muzzle of that little hound dog. And you can see it's still uh, in kind of a rough stage of, of being carved. This is a common, uh, car, a common a figure for carvers. This is called a wood spirit. And uh, it's kind of a le legendary figure uh, like the Irish, uh, the little Irish fella, that if you catch him, you know, you'll have, you'll, he has to lead you to the pot of gold. Well, this is the wood spirit, and the legend is that if you see one of these in the woods, you'll have good fortune, and uh, he'll bring you good luck, and maybe, maybe a few bucks, you know. But anyway, that's an interesting figure to carve. This is another, another face, and this originated from a square piece, and you, you can see how the features have taken advantage of the square shape of the wood to where the nose is the a farthest point of the face that kind of sticks out, and you can see it begins with that square shape. But this is also a variation of the wood spirit. Once you carve a couple of these, you can change a few, uh, few features and, and get completely different, completely different faces. This is a carving of Archbishop Hannon, who uh, uh, passed away a couple of years ago, and his, uh, his the the bust, the sculpture was in the paper one. Uh, one issue, and I carved the bust of Archbishop Hannon uh, from that sculpture that was in the newspaper. You can see the see the detail, and these were carved. You can see the the hair has been carved with those V tools we had talked about earlier. And let's see, one last, one last uh, figure is the, this is called the Sleepy-Eyed Owl. And again, because of its, its shape and configuration, you can see how I began with the square a piece of basswood again. And if you, if you notice, some of these pieces have been uh, stained with acrylic paints and some, uh, a stain with acrylic paints, and then some are bare wood because folks that, that like my carvings, sometimes they'll like to finish them their way or use a stain or paint uh, that, uh, that, that, that they want to change themselves. So, Sleepy-Eyed Owl, this has a slight stain, 
on the tree limb that he's holding on to. And this is also, an owl is also a popular figure. And uh, one thing I generally tell my customers is this is an educated owl because this owl says whom instead of who. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video of my carvings and my carving techniques. And uh, we look forward to uh, making more videos and hopefully, hopefully you will enjoy those and find those interesting.